Listening is an act of love. Thank you. You can help lift up the voices, stories, and challenges we share by making a contribution at thiswayout.org. A sincere thank you to all of you who already support This Way Out. Your support matters. I'm Melanie Keller. And I'm Michael Taylor Gray. With News Wrap, a summary of some of the news in or affecting LGBTQ communities around the world for the week ending April 2nd, 2022. Criminalizing lesbian sex has been specifically declared a violation of international law and human rights for the first time. The March 23rd announcement by the UN Committee on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women involved a challenge to Sri Lanka's colonial era penal code. It punishes carnal intercourse against the order of nature with up to 10 years in prison and a fine and any act of gross indecency with up to two years in prison and a fine according to Human Rights Watch. Lesbian Sri Lankan human rights activist Rosanna Flamer Caldera told the United Nations panel that Penal Code Section 365A violates her right to live free from discrimination. The panel decided the criminalization of same-sex sexual activity between women in the South Asian nation has meant that Flamer Caldera has had difficulties with finding a partner, has had to hide her relations, and runs the risk of being investigated and prosecuted in this context. It said that Sri Lanka's government had failed to protect her against and have partaken in harassment, abuse, and threats against the author's work promoting the rights of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and intersex community in Sri Lanka. It also called on the government to specifically protect and financially compensate Flamer Caldera and to decriminalize consensual same-sex sexual conduct between women having passed the age of consent. By extension, that means all consensual adult same-gender sexual conduct. The Sri Lankan government has six months to file a written response. Thailand politicians are playing another round of pass the hot potato. With two popular bills, the cabinet has returned to the parliament for further review. It's an ongoing procedural tactic to prevent both the progressive liquor and marriage equality bills from coming to a vote, according to Coconuts Bangkok. Deputy Government Spokesperson Rashada Donatarek said that the marriage equality bill was considered to be too similar to a lesson marriage civil partnerships bill that's also being considered. Donatarek claimed that home brewing of alcohol is already allowed, making the progressive liquor bill unnecessary. In Coconut Bangkok's assessment, when the opposition Move Forward Party introduced the two bills early last month, they were kicked to the cabinet for review. Now they're heading back to Parliament where they will likely be shelved two months prior to being read again and, in all likelihood, punted back to the cabinet. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed the Parental Rights in Education Bill into law on March 28th. No doubt what's known as the Don't Say Gay Bill is intended to push his unannounced bid for the Republican presidential nomination. His new law specifically bans any classroom discussion of sexual orientation or gender identity in kindergarten through third grade. Its additional age-appropriate and developmentally appropriate language is so vague that many teachers will probably self-censor those subjects in all grade levels. Parents are allowed to sue a school district if they think the law has been violated in their child's classroom. So imagine a third grade teacher during typical classroom discussions about family when at least one student begins describing their two moms or two dads. What should the teacher do? The bigoted law is scheduled to take effect on July 1st, but the first federal lawsuit has already been filed. Equality Florida and Family Equality is joining students, parents, and teachers to challenge the law. Attorneys from the National Center for Lesbian Rights filed the suit in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Florida on March 31st. The judge assigned to the case is Alan Windsor. Slate first reported that Windsor is a Trump appointee, whose apparent qualification was his defense of the state's now-defunct marriage equality ban in 2014. On the upside, Robbie Kaplan is leading the opposition's legal charge. She is best known for winning the Supreme Court case that struck down the Defense of Marriage Act, the decision that paved the way for the high court's marriage equality ruling two years later. Into the Florida fray has come one of TV's favorite sons of anarchy, straight from the movie Nightmare Alley. Hellboy actor Ron Perlman is a notorious social media political F-bomber, 
and he had some choice words for the Florida governor. Although, ironically, he can't say a few of them on the radio. Good morning, Governor DeSantis. Ron here. Um, don't say gay. Don't say as the first two words in a sentence spoken by a political leader of a state in the United States of America, don't say. Don't say, you Nazi pig. Say. First Amendment. Read about it. Then run for office. You Republicans are pushing similar don't say gay bills in at least 16 other states. The governors of both Arizona and Oklahoma jumped on the bandwagon this week for laws to persecute transgender youth, another kind of don't say that's becoming all the rage in Republican-dominated U.S. states. Arizona's Doug Ducey marked Transgender Day of Visibility on March 31st by signing a bill to ban trans girls and women from competing in school sports. He also added his signature to a bill outlawing gender-affirming surgery for transgender minors. Healthcare professionals rarely support surgery for trans people under the age of 18, so that law is no more than hateful symbolism. Oklahoma's Kevin Stitt signed the state's trans sports ban bill on Trans Visibility Day, too. Like most such bills, both the Arizona and Oklahoma anti-trans sports measures specifically target trans girls and women, not trans boys and men. Utah's Republican Governor Spencer Cox vetoed a trans sports ban bill last week, but lawmakers quickly overrode it. The Indiana legislature could override Republican Governor Eric Holcomb's veto of a similar measure when it reconvenes in May. Close to a half dozen U.S. states have banned trans girls and women from competing in school sports in just the first three months of this year. The option of an X-gender marker on U.S. passports will be added to the traditional M and F designations beginning on April 11th. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said in his March 31st announcement that the option will become available for other forms of documentation next year. The change comes seven years after intersex Navy veteran Dana Zim sued the State Department after it denied their application for a passport with the X-gender marker. Zim received the first gender-neutral U.S. passport last October. Secretary Blinken added, We reaffirm our commitment to promoting and protecting the freedom, dignity, and equality of all persons, including transgender, non-binary, and gender non-conforming persons around the world. The United States joins a number of other countries that offer a third gender option, including Australia, Austria, Bangladesh, Canada, Denmark, Germany, Iceland, India, Malta, Nepal, New Zealand, and Pakistan, according to The Advocate. Finally, to a majority of sane people, U.S. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia has become a laughingstock. She first burst onto the political landscape by warning against Jewish-controlled lasers in space. The QAnon conspiracy favorite of the Republican Party's neo-Nazi wing has been one of the most hyperventilating opponents of pandemic protections. Still, supporters of Donald Trump continue to eat up her often beyond-the-pale, blatantly bigoted remarks. She was among the warm-up acts at a Trump Save America rally in Commerce, Georgia on March 26th. Maybe not that warm, since by most accounts, there were many empty seats and quite a few mid-Trump walkouts. Green rallied the troops, promising a Republican-controlled Congress that will actually build Trump's southern border wall and expand domestic oil drilling. The crazy train went off the rails with her attack on U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg and his husband, Chastin. And you know what? Pete Buttigieg can take his electric vehicles and his bicycles, and he and his husband can stay out of our girls' bathrooms. Yep. Yeah. Secretary Buttigieg called Green's rant literally nonsensical. A Twitter user wrote, I'm a woman, and honestly, I'd rather have Pete Buttigieg in the bathroom with me than Marjorie Taylor Greene. That's News Wrap, global queer news with attitude. 
for the week ending April 2nd, 2022. Follow the news in your area and around the world. An informed community is a strong community. News Wrap is written by Greg Gordon, edited by Lucia Chappell, produced by Brian DeShazer, and brought to you by you. Thank you. Help keep us in ears around the world at thiswayout.org, where you can also read the text of this newscast and much more. And you can read the transcript and listen to News Wrap each week by subscribing to our This Way Out radio channel on YouTube. For This Way Out, I'm Melanie Keller. Stay healthy. And I'm Michael Taylor Gray. Stay safe. This Way Out delivers LGBTQ news and culture to more than 150 local communities on radio stations around the world. And we are also a free online news service. You can choose your favorite way to listen, online or on the air, at thiswayout.org. Please sign up for our free e-newsletter, Inside This Way Out. We will respect your trust in us and make sure your personal information is never shared with others. Just send us an email at info at thiswayout.org to receive the informative and unique addition to the show. You'll be invited to join us for a more in-depth look into our stories and be encouraged to learn more about This Way Out's three decades of broadcast activism. We hope you choose to join us in celebration of LGBTQ history and culture. Email us at info at thiswayout.org to join the movement. We'll make sure you always know what's going on inside This Way Out. 